Welcome to the Celtics Rewind. I'm JP. And I am Matt, GM. What's up, y'all? Hey, hey, y'all. This is episode 18 of the Celtics Rewind, talking all things Boston Celtics. I'm JP, the franchise flying solo today. Um, Nat, Nat, the GM, is still out on um, Prell Sewell as she's still recovering from surgery. Um, she'll be back soon. Um, I definitely know that y'all will be missing her analysis and her great takes, uh, but she'll be back soon, though, and I can't wait for her to come back soon. And uh, we'll go ahead and get the ball rolling on the Boston Celtics in the playoffs now. So, uh, But shout out to Nat, the GM, always holding it down. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, the important matter, uh, which was the other day about the Boston Celtics loss to the Atlanta Hawks. Now, I understand that we had a 30-point lead and we blew the lead and we lost to the Hawks. I understand getting out rebounded by the Hawks. I understand the Hawks shot a lot better than the Celtics. They shot over 50%, both field goal and three-point shooting. I understand we shot poorly from the free throw line. I understand that we let the foot off the gas early after having a 30-point lead. So I understand all these things. Even Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Joe Mazzula, everybody on the Celtics team know that it was um, they have the lead and they messed it up. They know that. They know that the late-game execution didn't work. But you still got people out there just shitting on the Celtics. Like, they feel like it's their downfall. Like, oh, yes, they acting like the Celtics is not going to make the playoffs. Like, all this overreaction (laughs) the other night was just unbelievable. Um, Like, y'all acting like the Celtics are not it. Y'all acting like the Celtics should be worried in the playoffs. Y'all should be acting like, oh, man, you know, they're the same old team like they were the past couple years. Like, Jason Tatum is not going to be the guy that's going to take the Celtics to the next level. Oh, Jalen Brown is not worth the damn for his uh, contract that he signed this past summer. All these things, y'all don't want the Boston Celtics to raise number 18 in the banners. It's okay. I love the fuel. I love the motivation. I love the energy the people are giving to the Celtics. And the Celtics is going to prove y'all wrong. So in terms of the loss, yes, it was a bad loss. I understand that they had a 30-point lead and blew it. The last time we seen that was back in the late 90s. We understand. It wasn't really a big deal. It really wasn't. It was only the Celtics' 15th loss of the season. They are on pace to win 60-plus games this season they still got plenty games left and yet y'all want to count that they are going to be in the play-in or out of the playoffs like give me a break give me a break um but yeah i I wasn't overreacting like it it lost is a loss it happens in the game and like every single night any team could be beat it's the nba like y'all acting like they should be like the dream team and blow out like all these teams man listen you got 15 other like you know professional players on every nba team it's just a professional basketball league okay it's it's okay if they lose a game or so okay (laughs) oh man so i just wanted to just get that off my chest um shout out to the atlanta hawks that was the biggest win of the season. Shout out to them. They were excited in Atlanta. The fans was going crazy. DC Young Fly happens to be in the video just celebrating. Okay, that's cool. 
that's cool. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks social media team decides to make it a 30 for 30 on their social media, calling it the biggest comeback in Atlanta Hawks history, whatever. I thought it was hilarious. It was really funny. But they forgot about one thing. The Boston Celtics is going to see him again on Thursday. And I don't think it's going to be that same type of game like I had Monday. It's not going to be the same type of game. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm just going to give the Atlanta Hawks a warning. It's not going to be the same game. Boston Celtics, anytime that they lose a game that they should have won, oh, yeah, you know they're going to be coming for a little revenge. You know they're going to be coming for revenge. Um, so, yeah, don't expect <laughs> – don't expect – a um a close victory on the Boston Celtics part. It's probably going to be a ass whooping, I would say. And also, people tend to forget about Monday that Daryl White and Drew Holiday didn't play. They didn't play. Imagine if we had either Daryl White or Drew Holiday. But it's the Celtics. They should beat the Hawks, okay? And? Imagine we had Daryl White and Drew Holiday. I feel like we would have won Monday. We would have won Monday. So if they do play tomorrow, like I say, it's going to be a blowout in Atlanta. They're going to take it to heart, and then they're going to whoop that ass tomorrow. So um, I'm sorry that I'm kind of just like, Y'all probably feel like I'm, like, kind of angry and stuff like that, you know, about that loss. I'm really not. I'm kind of just angry of just, like, everybody acts like the Celtics are done. I was like, y'all want to hate on the Celtics for no reason at all, just because it's the Boston Celtics. You, you hear it all. You hear it all from different NBA fans. Like, oh, man, a great day for a Boston Celtics loss. Oh, Jason Tatum is not next level. Oh, Jalen Brown is not it. Oh, th all this, all that. Like, give me a fucking break. Give me a break. Like, <laughs> we still are the best team in the Eastern Conference. We're still one of the best teams in the NBA. Like I said earlier, they're on pace to win 60 plus games. And the Celtics, you know, they're just experimenting right now in terms of their lineups and stuff. Like, you see one game, Tatum, Al Horford, Drew Holiday, um, Sam Housel, Bassett, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Pozingas would be out that particular game, or it could be the other way around. And you could see Derek White, Pozingas, Jalen Brown in the lineup along with, you know, a Luke Cornette, Sam Hauser, Payne Pritchard, while Jason Tatum, um, Al Horford, Drew Holiday be out that particular game. So Joe Mazur is just experimenting lineups. He's just doing different adjustments just to see what can work when they can be prepared for the playoffs. So they're just going through the regular season just like, you know, on cruise control. I mean, like a lot of great teams done that. The San Antonio Spurs back in the day, They'd be going on cruise control, and then they ramp it up in the playoffs. So, and I just like the fact that Joe Missoula is managing and resting players so that they be healthy for the playoffs, so that they can avoid significant injuries of Porzingis or a Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, Derek White, Drew Holiday, anybody on that Celtics roster. They're just trying to avoid the injuries. So he's doing a great job doing that. And give credit to the Celtics organization too as well. And then giving like the bench guys more playing time. You know, we've seen Peyton Pritchard. He's been balling out the past couple of games, averaging like 16, 18 points a game, shooting really good percentage. If he didn't like try to attempt a half court shot and stuff, he'd be doing a higher percentage. Um, Luke Cornette's been playing good basketball too as well just play simple he does his job get his rebounds uh, do the pick and roll do the screens do whatever it takes for his team to win I like that you seen Sam Housel went off for 10 threes in the game could have had the record if it wasn't for um, the injury but they, I love the fact that they're giving like the other players like playing time just to see what they can do I, I like what 
Azaria Tillman brings to the table. So I, I'm, I'm liking the fact I'm very confident of this Boston Celtics team um, in the playoffs. I feel like in the playoffs, they're going to be a different factor. I'm just going to say. And y'all tend to forget they won nine straight games before the loss to Atlanta. Nine straight games. Dem demolishing opponents. So... <laughs> I guess just this one loss, everybody just goes overboard with it. Give me a freaking break now. But um, let's go ahead and get into the next couple of games. Um, so they have the Atlanta Hawks again on Thursday, which I said earlier is probably going to be an ass whooping. They got the Pelicans this Saturday. Then next Monday, they have the Charlotte Hornets. Then next Wednesday, they have the Oklahoma City Thunder, which I'm looking forward to that game because Celtics did lose that game pretty badly to the Thunder. So we'll see what happens that game. And then they got the Sacramento Kings next Friday. What would be your prediction, JP, um, for the Celtics' next five games? At best, they could be 5-0. and oh. Worst, I would say 4-1. and one. Reason I said 5-0 and oh, I feel like they can beat those teams. I feel like, especially Oklahoma City, I feel like they're going to get revenge on Oklahoma City. So I feel like they're going to win that game. I just, I am just confident enough they're going to win that game because they didn't forget about that loss. Now, if you're talking about 4-1, and one, who they could possibly lose to, if things, if they keep doing things like resting players or, you know, just, you know, going in and probably laying foot off the gas, they can probably lose to Oklahoma City. I can see that. Or they could probably lose to Sacramento. Or could it be the New Orleans Pelicans, who's really crying and up the standings as the number four seed? Uh, shout out to the Pelicans. Um, so who knows? Who knows? But at best, 5-0. and Worse, I would say 4-1. Um... I also want to uh, give a huge shout out to Jalen Brown. Ever since the All Star break, this dude's been playing really great basketball. But yet, they still have haters like, oh, yeah, he's not living up to his uh, contract. He got the richest contract in NBA history, blah, blah, blah. But he's been playing great basketball. And then I bet you he's going to have all the haters to be quiet when he holds up that championship ring. What y'all going to be saying then? Same thing with Jason Tatum, all the slander he's been getting. When he holds up that championship ring, what you going to say now? What you going to say now? But a huge shout out to Jalen Brown. Also a huge shout out to Derek White winning Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Um, very happy for Derek White. Um, but yeah, man, you know, they're just making different adjustments and then they're just going to see what works in the playoffs or what doesn't work in the playoffs so that they be ready. And then Al Hofer ain't going to be tired like he was last year in the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens in the playoffs, and we'll talk more about it coming up when it gets close. Um, so, yeah, this is episode 18 of the Celtics Rewind, talking all things Boston Celtics. I'm JP, the franchise. We'll see y'all next week. Peace, y'all.